You guys, have I been doing this wrong? Have I gotten it wrong? Let's get into it. Hey friends. Oh, it's good to see you here. Good to see you here. Um, I made a video that didn't get posted earlier today. And it didn't get posted because the video software that I use said it was too large um, to import. So I'm kind of glad that happened which because it gave me an opportunity to redo it. And the reason I wanted to redo it um, is because I think sometimes you have to sleep on something, right? And that's exactly what I did. Um, I drove early this morning and then got to um, my stopping point and essentially slept for several hours and now I'm back up and my mind really hasn't changed. Um, I just think that that um, I'm in a much better spot to talk about this. So let me um, let me get into what I want to what I want to say. This morning I watched a replay of a live stream video that was put up by a guy who built a fleet over eight years and then closed his doors, went belly up, right? Like, like happened to so many other companies. In fact, in his video, he talks about over 700 companies, trucking companies closed their doors. Now I, I didn't know the sheer number of trucking companies that suffered in 2019 and, and I'm sure there's many more um, that have fewer trucks that you know probably closed that went undisclosed and it's it's pretty tragic right um, but we've all heard heard these companies you know it goes almost viral on social media how they close their doors send a message out to their drivers basically chain their their front doors on their building and the drivers are sort of left out on the road um, fending for themselves and you know you don't typically hear any more from those companies um, you hear that they shut their doors and then you hear about other companies jumping in to help those drivers but you never hear from the company that closed and that's really what caught my attention about this this live stream. Um, it was close to an hour and a half and typically I won't rewatch lives that are that long because I think there's more value when you're on the live. But I watched it three or I didn't watch it. I was listening to the audio when I was driving. I listened to it three times. Three times. Because this guy talks about how he failed trucking. Now these are his words. He talks about uh, sort of how he built his fleet. He talks about going in and um, just sort of the trials and tribulations and the the um, stresses. And he talks about what happened, what went wrong. I mean, he says, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. And my um, reefer just kicked on and I'm hoping that you don't have the interference from that, but I apologize if you do, I'll speak up a little bit. So I thought this is such valuable information for people like myself who want to start a fleet, right? So at the time he had, um, well he says seven and then he says nine. So. I'm not sure at what point, what, you know, how many trucks he actually had at the time, but I know he had either seven to nine trucks he had on the road, or I shouldn't even say on the road because he talks about what happened in his, in his fleet. And then he had ordered four additional brand new trucks. So he was expecting four more to come in. He was trying to get 50, he was trying to get to 15 trucks and he talks about why and 
the reason I'm making this video is because, you know, it took me over 20 years to pursue my dream of becoming a truck driver. And then when I got into trucking, I saw, this was 2018, mind you, right? So I didn't know anything about trucking previously, didn't know the rates before that. All I knew is that I had a hell of a year in 2018 and people were like, yeah, but we haven't seen these rates in a very long time. So, you know, don't necessarily get used to these rates, right? But it was at the same time that I was experiencing such great rates and revenue and take home pay that I said, I should buy a truck, get somebody else to drive, buy another one, get somebody else to drive. You know, the mindset of building a small fleet. So when he talks about how he failed as a fleet owner and he spent eight years building his fleet, I was, I was, you know, if you, if you, if a movie was playing and there's a, there's a statement made in this video where all of a sudden it was like screeching tires. It was like, Wah! I mean, that's what my mind was doing because I heard a statement, like he's telling his whole story, right? And then I heard a statement from him, which is what put the brakes on my thought process about buying trucks and becoming a fleet owner. And, and he says throughout this, it's like, if you want to be a fleet owner, don't let me stop you, right? That that's not why he's doing it. He's hoping that people learn from his failure um, so they don't repeat it, right? And he's like, I'm not telling you not to, not to be, you know, to be a fleet owner. I'm not telling you not to build a fleet. I'm just telling you what happened in his story. And he says in there, he says, he says this statement, and I'm going to tell you what it is in a second. He says this, and then he says, and nobody talks about it on YouTube. He says the right thing to do or the smart thing to do, or I'm paraphrasing, right? But he's like, be a company driver. What? 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 Okay. This, I, I'm going to link his live below. And I also commented on his um, live stream that I would love to interview him. I would love to get him on this channel and um, have it have you guys sending questions so we can ask these things of him because I think he's really business savvy. I think he's intelligent. So I don't think it's, it's it, it has anything to do. I don't think his failure has anything to do with he doesn't know how to run a business. I don't think it has anything to do with that. Um, I've been watching this guy since before I came into trucking, but I was always sort of a behind the scenes watcher, right? I never got really too involved. Um, but what's interesting is that he was a lease operator in Prime, so he has that experience just like me. And then he started building his fleet under RST's authority. Now, RST is a company, you probably heard it um, around the YouTube sphere of truckers, you know, I know Trucker Brown worked for them. Um, and I used to see him sometimes in the inbound, outbound um, bays at the terminal. So, but I never went up and said hello to him. But, you know, he's, you know, he talks about because of the liability with owning your own truck and having other people drive your trucks. Talks about the insurance costs, the, the sheer operating costs, right? That this industry is so tough unless you have a volume of trucks to support it, you're really, I mean, you're gonna make 3% profit. So, you know, he makes the analogy, if you have a million in revenue, you're gonna have about 950 thousand dollars in expenses and you will potentially clear 50 grand now maybe a little different if you own all of your equipment if you have trailers whoa i'm not sure what that was outside my truck but um it may be 
different, you know, as personally, if you are also driving one of the trucks, you may see some additional revenue. But from a company standpoint, and then that's when he says, be a company driver. You don't have a liability. You make more. What? This is insane. Have I? I've never been a company driver. Am I seeing this all wrong? Am I? Am I seeing this all wrong? Have I been that clouded by being a lease operator that I really didn't look at some of the real benefits with being a company driver? Now, if you if you look at like a lot of the people coming into the industry, especially when it, I don't know so much about other trucking companies, but when people come to Prime, they they're always asking, "Should I go company or should I go lease?" Like that seems to be like I don't know, such a huge question within that company, right? And I know a lot of other companies also do le lease purchase, straight up leases, that sort of thing. And I, I don't know if I got it wrong. I don't know if I got it wrong. Am I planning for failure? I mean, this is a, a very real question because I I look at my I look at my rate per mile, right? I look at my settlements that I get. But this this guy as a lease operator and I don't know I don't know how long ago he was a lease operator. Um But he said he was making about 45 cents per mile and he was running his ass off. That's less than a company driver. That's less than a company driver at Prime. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm starting to question my strategy. You know, two days ago, I just said that I wanted to purchase two trucks. I. I clearly can't drive two trucks, so I would need, you know, at least a driver or a team in the other truck. And then you get to thinking, you're like, okay, so then I'll drive one of the trucks and then I'll build up, save money again, and then buy another truck, get somebody else. And that's how you start building a fleet. And I'm like, maybe I shouldn't be. You know, what makes me different than the 700, 700 other companies that close? Celadon, a large company, closed their doors. Sure, I have guts. Sure, I want the glory. Sure, I'm, I'm ballsy and sure, I'm somewhat business savvy. But what makes you think that those companies and those managing or business owners weren't the same? Like, am I driving myself into a brick wall of failure? Because now... Now is the time for me to figure this stuff out because I don't know if I should continue on my, my plan, you know, with setting money aside. But when my lease is up in February, 2021, because remember you guys, I'm, I'm basically renting this truck um, between, I pay 50 to 60 grand a year to prime just for the truck and insurance payment. That doesn't include like the permits and that, it's just the truck and, and insurance. So in three years, I will have paid what? 165,000 minimum um, to, to rent this truck and I give it back. Now I knew what I was getting into, so I'm not trying to be like, oh, that's shocking to me or anything like that. That is not what I'm doing here and I'm not blaming Prime at all. It's a smart business model they have, right? But my whole plan was then to take the lease incentive payout, right? Which is money that they take from me every week and put it in an account. And then when I go to turn my lease in, whatever is left from them having to fix anything, clean anything, you know, do maintenance, replace it, whatever, whatever's left out of that money then gets paid out to me. 
So it's kind of like a leftover maintenance account, if you will. I don't know if I should stick all of the money that I'm going to stick aside this year and that payout amount and just put it in the bank and then go drive local for a company and become a W-2 employee. I mean, this is this video has given me real, real reason to pause and question what I'm doing. I'm a, uh, you know, I'm not one that changes my mind with the flavor of the day, right? So it's not like it's Wednesday. I'm going to go and be a lease operator and then Thursday comes and like, I'm going to go buy two trucks and then Friday I want a little creamer in my coffee. So I'm going to go local. That's not what I do. Like when I, when I go to make a decision, I do research. I listen to people. I, I, um, ask questions and I talk about things out loud, which is what I'm doing on this video itself. I'm talking about this aloud. But never have I had the opportunity to hear directly from a guy that had to close his doors because his trucking company failed. I mean, this is invaluable, right? We're not hearing from any of those other companies what happened. They're not, they're not doing YouTube videos. This guy did it. His name is Justin Wood. His, his link to his live is below. Um, I really, I really, I'm going to tag him in this. Um, I really hope that he takes me seriously and would honor me by, by letting me interview him. And, and if that happens, I don't know how we would, we would do it. Um, but you know, maybe, um, opening up so you guys can send me in questions and, we just do brass tacks. Now it's not to it's not to criticize him. If nothing else, it's to learn what what happened. Like he talks about it in the live stream. So I would encourage you to watch the live or the replay um, before before you know like you would watch him on this channel if he so grants that. Because I think that sets the tone. I think you'll understand what he brings to the table. I think you can understand that he's not he's not malicious. He's not looking for people to fail. He's not trying to set people up. He's not, you know, he really just said the industry took so much from him. You know, he was trying to, to create this company and, and put everything on the line and invested everything he had. And then when, when things started to go bad and he talks about what happened, and those are very real things like th that it was in his intent, but that now scares the crap out of me. The scenario he set up is the one that really, really hit home to me because the only one you can really trust is yourself, right? And when you mess up, you mess up. But when you take accountability for other people that are driving for you and they mess up, it can be devastating. Devastating. So, my question, my question really is, and I, I, I don't, I won't have an answer today or tomorrow or the next week, but I'm really starting to, to dig my heels in and maybe like Fred Flintstone, I'm trying to stop a runaway vehicle. Maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm planning, like I said, for eventual failure. I do not want to come back on a video in four years and reference this video and say, do you guys remember when I made that, that video about, should I go company? And then I'm like, no, I'm going to put everything into it. And I'm going to do it anyway. And then tell you that I couldn't do it and I failed. I don't get into things to fail. I, that is not my intent, nor do I think it's any other company's intent. They don't, you don't start a business going, I know I'm going to fail in two years, but I'm going to put everything I have into it. Nobody does that. Everybody thinks they're going to be successful. 
yeah, through a lot of hard work and maybe some tears and maybe some sweat and all of that, that's expected. But they expect that because there's a greater payoff. There's success coming, not failure. Let me know what you guys think below. Like, a couple questions I would have to you. Do you guys want to hear from this Justin? Um, on this channel? Like, do you, like, do you really want to, to hear from him? Um, secondly, wh what do you think? Like, am I... Am I doing a disservice by talking so much about how I enjoy lease that I'm not giving the idea of a company driver props? Like maybe, maybe, maybe company drivers have it better than me. Maybe I got it wrong. What, what are you a company driver like are you a company driver for prime um you know add a comment below like were you a lease operator <clears throat> or an owner operator and you went company or were you company or lease and went and and bought your own like like tell me what your thoughts are below i think this is a really really important discussion because I, I get this question at like every day. Should, <clears throat> should I go lease or should I go company? And I know that nobody else, nobody can answer that question with ex the exception of the individual. But I, I, and I thought that I had done a lot of research, but you know what? I don't know if my research is getting clouded by my desire for making my dream come true, right? There's that statement something to the effect of, I don't think my heart has caught up to what my mind already knows. Maybe my mind knows that the right thing is not for me to build a fleet, but my heart is like, oh, but I, I really want to. Hmm. Deep thoughts, right? Um, but seriously, I think I think I'm I think I may be getting it wrong. Now, if you told me today, yes, don't be a lease operator, get the hell out of it. There's there's no way I'm gonna walk away from my lease today. I have too much invested. Um, I've talked about this before. If I left today, I mean, I just had four drives put on, so I spent um, like forty six hundred dollars by the time everything was was done. So that somewhat cleared out my tire fund, but it's been rebuilding. So I, ha I think I have another 1600 in there by now. So if I left today, I'd be giving prime 17 grand. I think that's what's in my accounts. Um, and I'm not willing to do that if I can hold out for one more year and get my payout. But I'm talking about in February, 2021, what, what do I do? I have some, I have a big, big decision to make big I know I don't want to lease again. I know I don't. Um, and I, I can talk about that in a separate video because it, it's more than I want to put in here. But I know that that option is not something I want to pursue. I don't want to, and it's not with Prime. I love Prime, so it's not that. I don't want to go to another company and lease. I just don't want to lease. I don't want to rent my truck. So, do I go company or do I really buy? I mean, that's, that's where I'm at. Drop a comment below. Help a girl.